Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Check out getgoodracing.com. I've coached hundreds of drivers from real life racers to sim enthusiasts who experience rapid improvement after just one session. And while investing in top-notch hardware is great, imagine how much more you can elevate your experience by adding coaching to the mix. My methods are practical, aiming to break down complex concepts into easily digestible bits that are simple to understand. You can find reviews of the sessions I've conducted on the Fiverr link provided in the video description. Let's elevate your racing skills together. Now for the track guide. For turn 1, the braking reference is the 50 meter board and this white line before the 50. I want to break slightly past the white line, but I'm looking more at the white line than the 50. So the breaking point is going to be something in between, but you will be more safer if you're going to use this white line. However, you don't want to open up this corner here just because this curb is bumpy, you don't want to use it under braking. So instead, break at the white line, break quite high initially, so I'm picking 90, and then you have to quickly drop it, but it's very important to apex as late as you can, so to turn the steering wheel as late as you can. So what I'm trying to force myself here is to make the straight line braking take a bit longer, so go a bit more forward, straight, and then turn. Because you want to apex late around here, you want to meet this curb very late, so I'm meeting it at this point. This is something that you want to do. Also, you don't want to track out wider to go more closely to the outside, instead you want to stay very close to the inside line, you want to follow this curb closely, like this, and avoid tracking out to the left side right here, because first of all, you're gonna cover less distance, so you're gonna gain time by covering less distance, but also you're gonna use less steering angle, you won't have to, to force the car to stay on the corner, instead you will turn the car with the brake release. So it's very important here, if we're looking at the brake shape, to modulate the brake so that the car will turn, because if you're gonna keep too much pressure on the brakes, the car will understeer. If you're gonna trail brake in the, let's say, 30 percentages, so instead of having like 15 percentage trail brake right here, you will have 30%, the car will understeer, because there's too much load on the fronts. So you need to balance how much weight you put on the front tires with the trail brake so that the car won't understeer because of the trail brake. So obviously you have to trail brake here, but what I'm trying to say is that trail, bra trail braking too much is going to go past the limit of the fronts and then the car will understeer. So it's very important to control this lower percent trail brake and the car should feel oversteery in this corner, like the rear should feel like it's gonna snap. That's when you get the proper rotation to be able to stay very tight here and put the power down nice, nice and confidently without having hesitation, just a small one in the upper percent part, it's not that big of a deal. If you have it on the initial part though, that's gonna be a lot more difficult to maintain lap time because it's gonna cost you a lot more. Now for the next corner, aligning with the grass here, very important to align with the grass and try to delay again the turning point so that you will cut this curb very late like this. You need to cut it, but you need to cut it late. If you're gonna cut it early, then you just will go, will track out wider for the next one because we want to prepare the next corner. The next corner is the one that matters so we, we need to have the car more or less close to the white line here on the exit. And whenever we, we go into this corner, we go with flat out throttle. And the moment we approach it, like the previous corner, dropping the throttle, adding a bit of the trail brake here. Just a moment, got some issues with um, the window. But what I'm saying is that the moment you approach it, you're gonna add a bit of trail brake, like 1% trail brake, 2% trail brake, and then putting back the power. This is gonna be the same for the next corners as well. So using all the track, looking at the 50, after the 50 applying the brake, staying in fourth gear, and trying to apex late and cut as much as I can with the trail brake. Now going back on power, same for this. 
trail break and cut as much as you can. You need to use all the track here. For this corner, as soon as I don't see this car on the left, I'm dropping the throttle and turning, applying just a bit of the brakes and then cutting here very much. You need to cut a lot, be back on power, position to the center of the track and then turn the car. You want to cut more than what I did here. That's why I had to do this correction on the throttle because I didn't cut enough. Now this section is tricky. This section you need to apex very late. So I'm bringing the car to the left, but I'm not using this curb. I'm not putting the car to the left part of the curb. Firstly, because you don't have time to properly position the car to the left and then turn. You will miss the turning point. But secondly, this curb will elevate a bit the car. And whenever you're going to turn, it's going to make that turn a bit lazier. So again, you won't, you won't turn at the perfect moment. You will turn a bit later and you will have to lift more than you need. Now, in this corner, you want to make this curb as late as you can. This was an early apex for me. So this was a mistake in the lap. Not the only mistake. It was a lot of mistakes, small mistakes, but they add up. But I'm going to try to point them out. So instead of apexing around here, you want to apex more around there. So this means that you can turn just a bit later. So instead of turning from this angle, force yourself to go more closely to the end of the curb right here and then turn and you will have a proper line because right now I'm stuck on this curb and I have to let go of the throttle. That's one of the mistakes. Now when you go into this part right here, again it's the same thing. You want to apex very late so you want to mid this curb very closely to the end of this green part on the right side. This wasn't a bad apex, it was decent, but this is going to be the goal. If you're going to apex early, you will have a lot of trouble keeping the throttle up. So you will have to lift more. Obviously, you still have to lift here. So I'm doing like a 60-40% lift and then go back. Keep in mind, this is the fixed setup. Using all the track on the exit. And now for the next corner, I'm braking the moment that I see that the elevation will change. So I'm a bit uphill, then I'm braking because I have better grip on this part when the road is a, a bit more straight than when going downhill. I think it was a bit of a early braking zone. I could have started the braking around here. That would have been a, a little bit better because I was up seven tenths and now I'm losing a bit on the entry. So definitely I braked a bit too much. But overall, you want to apex very close to this yellow sausage curb, put the power down immediately and then bring the car to the center track. And whenever you're taking this corner, the goal will be to don't drop the throttle to zero like what I did here. The goal will be to take this corner, but maintain the throttle, maintain it to like 10%, 20%. The more you're able to maintain it without dropping to zero, the more momentum you're going to carry. So this was a mistake because I turned in very early for this corner, like right here. So if I will maintain at this point, the car will go wider. So it will understeer and we will go to the outer part of the track, to the gravel trap. You need to apex just a bit later to make it work. So instead of hitting the curve at this point, you want to hit it more forward initially, like around here. And then you will be able to keep the throttle up and then you will gain here probably another two tenths. Going into the next corner, this corner and the next one are very similar. So what I'm using for braking is the 50 meter board. At the 50, I'm applying the brakes, I'm in fourth gear. And I don't want to brake very hard, I want to trail brake more. This is a long corner, so you should have a longer trail brake and then going back on power. So the key here for this corner and the last one is to not brake very hard initially. Because if you're going to kill the momentum on the initial part of the braking, then the car will feel like it needs a bit of throttle earlier than it should. And then that throttle application will make the car understeer, you will have to do corrections under throttle. So instead, start with the exit in mind. You want on the exit, whenever you go on power, to stay on power, to be like a straight vertical line, like this. And in order to do that, you need to carry the speed into a corner, you need to carry the momentum. The best way to do it is with a V-shaped line. So from here, I'm apexing 
first at this part, then I'm letting the car track out a bit wider, then I'm apexing back. So double apex, V-shaped line, that's the way to go for that corner and that's the way to go for the next corner as well. So first of all, we're not using this curve because we have around 230 kph, that's a lot of speed and we need to brake efficiently. So at looking at the 50, at the 50 applying the brakes, you don't want to brake very hard initially, downshifting to third and it's the same thing. You want the car to track out a bit wider, trail brake longer and then put the power down to get the second apex. It's gonna be the same thing as the previous one. And in short, that's a track guide of Mugello with the LMP3. I hope you have a great week ahead and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.